Song Revolution with John Chisholm on the NRT Podcast Network. Hey, everybody. John here. Welcome to Song Revolution this week. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And my heart is to not only encourage you in your songwriting, some of you might not even be songwriters. So my goal is to just help you to have a better life. I want to bring as much encouragement just to empower you in any way that I possibly can. My life is all around songs and songwriting and loving Jesus and worship and figuring out all that out and just enjoying life. But the show is really intended to bring you some interesting interviews, but to teach and to encourage and share. But it's always coming from my heart. I'm just wanting you to have a better life. So one of the funny things I like to say, it's about more than songs, y'all. It's about a better life, but it really is. And that's really why I'm here. So today I wanted to share a little bit. I did a recent one hour training just called Overcoming Songwriting Limitations. And I wanted to just share some of those principles with you on this show today. And I just tried to, if, if you didn't catch that training that I did recently, well, this would be a good time for you to catch up on that because I believe it's some really, really valuable information and encouragement and hopefully very inspiring to you, whether you're a songwriter or not. Maybe most of you listening are, but I believe that what I share, what I teach and all of our programs, our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program, which is our eight-week online coaching and mentoring program for songwriters, I've had so many people tell me that what I've taught them has really changed their lives. It's not just that their songwriting's improved, hopefully it has, but their lives have improved. Something has changed. Something's, I've had some people that have been transformed, literally had their lives transformed through the coaching. And I think it's because it's kind of a, a unique blend, if you will, of pastoring and teaching and coaching and encouraging we pray, we laugh, we dig deep into songs. But, you know, when we dig deep into songs, we're digging deep into the soul of the person writing them. And the way I say it is that you can't separate yourself from your songwriting. You bring all you are to the songwriting process. And there's a phrase that I hear a lot in a lot of the books and things that I listen to. And they say that how you do anything is how you do everything. And I think that's really true. And so how you approach your songwriting is really the same way you're going to approach everything else in your life. If you're lazy, if you're undisciplined about it, well, prob the odds are that you're probably lazy and undisciplined in other areas of your life. I've worked with some real drill sergeants who are trying to be songwriters who maybe seriously had a, a military background and they bring a real sense of dedication and discipline to everything they do that doesn't necessarily make them great songwriters but how you do anything is how you do everything so if you're experiencing here's some pastoring for you if you're experiencing failure or disappointment or discouragement in one area of your life odds are it's pervasive and has to do with a whole lot of your life and so if you can begin to take quality steps, a quality action towards healing those broken areas of your life and uh, really bringing, whether it's discipline or maybe it's creativity and fun, it, it can be the opposite too, to those areas, then maybe that will be a, a kind of a step toward healing and restoration in your whole life. Anyway, I believe that to be true. So uh, let me just jump into, you know, uh, again, let me finish up that thought in our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program, and you can read about that in the show notes. It's really about a whole lot more than songs. It's about a higher quality life, a life of communicating with yourself, with God, with others around you, truth and love and goodness. And so that's what this is about today, overcoming some songwriting limitations. We could, as we go along, try to really bring this around to a lot of the areas of our lives. I'm going to let you do that more than me, but you know, the intro is really around the idea that God wants to use you. I remember when I was a very young songwriter and hadn't broke into the business of songwriting, I, I was ignorant. I didn't know anything about it. I really 
always prayed, oh God, oh God, if you if you really want to use me, I surrender. Please, God, use me. And it, it always felt like it was this weird mix of pride and fear, you know, that that I had to be good enough somehow for God to use me. And, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. God uses donkeys. Come on. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of donkey people around that he's using, but and maybe I'm one of them. That's okay. I'm all right with that. But the truth is, you don't really qualify yourself to be used by God. He's the only qualifier. He's the one who raises up one and puts down another. It, it's not something that we really get to choose. I think we can desire it. I think that we can cooperate with it, but I think he'll lead us, you know, if we really we really submit, want to, of course, but there's a whole lot more than just pressing some magical use me God buttons and then it happens. I know that's true in my own life, but what I've come to believe, you guys, is that God wants to use you. He might not want to use you in the way you want to be used, and that's kind of a freaky thing, but uh, you know, sometimes there are clues in our lives if we are incredibly musically talented or we just have a very, very strong desire, a little bit of talent and a whole lot of desire. I think that was probably the case in my life. But, you know, there really is no reason to ask if God wants to flow through your life. Use is such a weird word. It's kind of a religious word, but it'd be, it'd be weird. A friend of mine, Wes Yoder, said recently, you know, it'd be weird if we called one of our kids over and said, hey, come here, Susie, I want to use you. It's like, that just sounds a little wonky and a little weird. And so, you know, the whole idea of God using us, I don't know. We've just, just one of those religious things that we talk about. But I think that we all should be allowing God to flow through our lives. And if we want to call that being used, okay. But being used sounds so dry and cold and doesn't sound very relational, right? But God really wants to flow through our lives. And so, you know, there should be no question about that. And I also just kind of push back on the idea of being inspired. People say, well, I would write something, but I'm just not inspired. And my question is always, well, do you know Jesus? Do you have the Holy Spirit in your life? Have you ever read a piece of scripture at all? I mean, you know, come on, guys. What are you waiting for to inspire you? So I think that we just kind of focus on some weird things sometimes, and we think, we're waiting for an outward event to come and motivate us when God's right there all the time, just deeply inspiring us. But, you know, you can still feel stuck and uncreative. We talk about writer's block, which I don't even believe in. We, we can feel unfulfilled, even ready to give up, discouraged, frustrated. And there can be a chasm between maybe what you feel like God wants you to do and what you're actually doing. You know, maybe you're complaining about your day job, you work at Hertz Rent-A-Car, or you work at the phone company, or you're, you know, you do this or you do that, but you really wish you could be writing songs, or you really wish you could be singing around the world, or you really wish you could be doing something else. And, you know, I understand that. I mean, I, I felt the same way 400 songs ago, and, and I've wound up singing all over the world you know, at this point and continuing to make music and release music. But let me tell you, you can be just as inspired. You can be just as on fire. If you want to use the word used by God, that's fine. You can be just as useful to God wherever you are. If you are the lawn guy who comes to my house, you can do that with an attitude of cheerfulness and love and graciousness. And you can be the most spirit-anointed lawn care guy on the planet and fulfill every bit of your calling. But yeah, so we kind of, we frustrate ourselves, I think. I think that we wind up having this weird kind of lofty idea of what it means to be used by God or for God to anoint our lives. And we forget that he's anointing us right where we are. If we're a mom, if we're a dad, if we are whatever kind of worker we are, if, if we don't work and we're feeling useless, I think it's just a matter of perspective. I think it's a matter of tweaking our 
perspectives so that we can realize, no, God is right here, right now. He is in this moment seeking to pour himself through your love, through your life, through, through wisdom that he can give you through just encouragement. It doesn't have to be something grand. We don't have to be Stephen Furtick or some of these big, you know, televangelist people or, or have a company or even be what we would say is a successful songwriter to be of use to God, right? But I I remember what it was like to, you know, feel that kind of discouragement and wonderment, you know, will God ever use me? Will I be something big and cool and all that? And, you know, looking back on 40 years in Christian music, I just, I look at it differently. And, and you might say, well, yeah, John, you can do that because you've been successful at what you wanted to do. But, you know, it was, it was, it has been, it continues to be an arduous road sometimes, you know, the, the calling of God comes with its own challenges and trials. I mean, just look at Jesus, look at Paul, look at the other apostles, look at Christians throughout the ages who have been persecuted and even killed. We're living in a time of the greatest number of martyrs for the faith ever in all of history combined. And, and you know, there, there can be that price to pay to follow Christ, but I'm kind of way off my topic here. Let's get back to what we're talking about, overcoming songwriting limitations today, because I do think I have some things that can be pointers that can really help you in every area of your life, as I've been pointing out today. So number one, get some real songwriting skills. I mean, this is just, it kind of goes without saying, you know, it's like there's no replacement for understanding and mastering the craft of songwriting. There's just no replacement for that. I mean, you can, you can write what you feel. I could sit down at the piano and just start writing, oh God, I just want to thank you, Jesus, for your love. Oh God, I want to thank you for that pizza that I had for breakfast this morning. It was so good. Dear God, I want to thank you for my wife. We've been married a long, long time and she likes me most days. Oh God, I just want to thank you, Jesus for my office and my desk and my computer that I like so much. Apples rock and the other guys don't. And God, thank you. And I could just go on and on and on. I could sing a melody. I could write out words, but it doesn't make it a song that's really going to be meaningful to anybody, right? It's just goofing around. So don't do that. Get some real skills and begin to master your craft. Every professional songwriter I know continues to grow. They don't just say, okay, I've arrived. I'm, I've, I've written, you know, I know how to write forever. You know, no, it's like we continue to read. We continue to study. We stay up on different kinds of, of uh, books about songwriting that come out. I can't tell you how many books from Berkeley or other people's books that I have I'm trying to get my book written to add to that library. But, you know, every, every artist of any kind continues onward. I mean, even Leonardo da Vinci was a lifelong learner. And any great artist, you know, that you can even think of, skilled, they, they work at the craft of whatever they're doing, in our case, songwriters. And so a lot of times writers that I've dealt with they're lazy and they just want everything to fall on them from the sky. Well, God gave me my song. Well, you know, don't blame that on God. God is a much better songwriter than that. You know, I mean, they play me the song and it's like, oh, wow, really? God gave you that? You know, so you're going to blame him for that? So I don't, I don't like it when people use that kind of language because, you know, God may give us some ideas, but we're the songwriters and we're going to write a song according to our skill level. And even Paul in uh, first or second Corinthians, when he was talking about the gifts, he said, prophesy according to your ability. And I've known people in my past who didn't prophesy all that well, because they hadn't really spent any time honing their intuitive gifts and really coming to the place where they could prophesy skillfully, whether you think that's preaching the word, or telling someone's fortune or whatever it is, you know, I met some people that were real whack jobs in the prophecy department because they just really didn't know what they were doing. And it's the same with songwriters. It's like, 
How much time do you spend working on the craft of songwriting and understanding what it means to find and write great titles and hooks? That's where songs start. They start with great titles and great hooks. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, it's like, well, what are you doing? How do, what do you, what is it you're trying to communicate? Just some blather from your, your mind, like I was doing a while ago. No, and that is just useless. So that's like when Paul said, I'd rather speak five words that people understand than a million in tongues. It's like, okay, tongues are great, but you know, if you don't add the understanding, you're not really edifying or helping anyone in the church. So guys, get some skills. And uh, along with that is just being current musically, you know, not writing like it's the 1960s or 70s. If you're an older person, that's always harder, but you've got to really spend some time learning how to write in current musical idioms and then developing the lyric of your song and not overwriting. That's just what happens. I mean, a lot of the writers that I work with in our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program, they just overwrite. And it comes from a good heart because they really want people to understand. And so they write these long lines, mile-long lyrics with about 75 sections because they really want people to understand. But what, they're, what I try to teach them and help them understand is that there's not room in a song for more than one idea. And so if you pick one big idea and you spend the entire song supporting that one idea, you're going to get a lot further into the minds and the, the hearts and the ears of people. So you got to be all about that. And you know, what's funny to me, you guys, I've said this a lot for years, is that, you know, doctors endure years of school, years, you know, a dozen years and residencies and all that kind of stuff. But Christian songwriters just want it all to fall out of the sky. And it's like, okay, well, if that's working for you, great. But, you know, chances are it's probably not working that well for you. So let's get real about that. If you really want to fulfill a passionate calling, then get some skills. That's number one. Number two is writer's block. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Now, writer's block, and the way I believe about it is that it's just an umbrella term. You know, it's kind of like saying, you're going to go get a Coke when you're really going to go get a Dr. Pepper or a Sprite or some other drink. It's like, it's not a Coke. That's a Dr. Pepper. But we kind of mislabel things. And we have this mysterious category called writer's block. But, you know, writer's block really has a lot of other underlying reasons that, that we're being unproductive. I mean, to me, it really is just, it's either an excuse because we're not disciplined enough to write. Or maybe we really are not in a productive season, but it's probably for some other underlying reason, like depression. You know, depression, I mean, some artists have to be depressed before they feel like they can write, but not most of us. That, that's kind of the exception. But most of us, when we feel depressed or down, you know, or stressed, we're not going to be writing at our best because our brains are just frozen, locked on to whatever that depression is coming from, right? So there's that underlying root cause or stress or anger, relational dysfunction, overwork, fatigue is just a big one, right? So what I want to encourage you to do is to stop saying out of your mouth, I have writer's block. Because here's the truth, you guys, energy grows where your focus goes, okay? So if you keep saying, I have writer's block, I have writer's block, I have writer's block. You are only enforcing negativity. And I, I think maybe the theme for this show is that everything applies to real life because it's the same in your real life. Stop for a moment and think about your, the little, if you have one, your, your little toe on your right foot. I mean, there are probably some people out here listening who might not have a little toe on their right foot, but think about that little toe for a moment. It's a tiny little thing, right? But right now, if you say, I'm thinking about the, the little toe on my right foot, okay, you can suddenly feel that little toe. It's just the craziest thing. But energy grows where your focus goes. And so it's true with anything. I mean, that's the root of addiction. When we get so focused on something that we think we must have, that energy goes to it and grows in that thing. And then that thing takes us over. So 
you know, think about it. This applies to every part of your life. So if you want more joy, focus on joy. Now, I'm I'm not into this, you know, total name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it thing, but there is a whole lot of truth. The Bible does talk about the tongue being the rudder of the ship, that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So if we've got life and death in our tongue, let's use it to say good things. Like I might feel a little bit stressed right now, and I'm not in as productive a season as I want to be, but with God's help, I'm growing out of it. I'm moving out of this thing. I'm getting better. I'm getting healed. I'm getting creative. I'm getting more in, in touch with my own innate inspiration and creativity, and I'm moving out of this unproductive season. Rather than saying, oh, I have writer's block, I have right. Don't say that anymore, you guys. Don't say those negative things. Just begin to, to say positive, blessed things over your life. And just watch as you get more creative, you get more expansive, you get more energetic, you get more life flowing through your system if that's what you focus on. If you don't, if you're focusing on the negative, then you're just going to be going down, down, down. And listen, ain't nobody can testify to that like me. I mean, I've been, there have been seasons of my life, you know, where I've been the worst about that. And you just get more and more depressed. You get more and more anxious, the anxiety. Oh my gosh, it's just not worth it. So let's bring some positivity to our tongues, okay? And, you know, that's really only, you know, sowing and reaping Galatians. We do reap exactly what we sow. And so I want to suggest if you've been in, in an unproductive season that you have heretofore called writer's block, I want to encourage you to start turning that around into a resourceful kind of season, to learn to resource yourself, to turn that around and stop saying, I'm blocked, but just say, I'm in a season of resourcing myself. Don't own the blockage because that just causes more and more blockage, but recognize the real issue. First of all, lack of skills. So many writers that I've, I've, I've coached and counseled, they're blocked because they don't know how to write. It's not that they have writer's block. They just don't have skills. They don't even, they just don't know how to write. And so that's why they feel blocked because they don't know how to start and finish a whole song. I'm kind of preachy today, but I'm kind of liking this. All right. So recognize the real issues of the lack of skills or the stress or the depression or whatever dysfunction is going on, but then turn it into research. Get curious. Okay. Why am I like this? Why do I feel blocked? Why can I not finish my songs? What is going on with me that is keeping me from completing the goal of writing even a simple song? So turn this season, even, even before you feel like you are back into the flow, if you've ever been in a flow, turn it into a season of curiosity and research. And let me tell you two ways that you can do that. This is so easy. It's so basic but it's, it is just so essential. Read more. Get words in front of your eyeballs. Get words down in your heart. How, do you, how can you expect to write beautiful words if you're not filled with beautiful words? You think they're going to fall out of the sky like ripe apples off a tree? It just really doesn't happen like that, you guys. So repent of that fantasy. Get your head out of the clouds. Get your nose in some books. I I've got 300 audible titles. Get some audible books. At least listen to great words if you're not reading them. And there's so many millions of books out there. I'm not even going to go into a reading list right now. But listen more. Listen to music more. If, if you want to write great music, listen to great music. You know, spend some time every day, even if it's five minutes, not just listening to music while you're getting dressed or taking a shower or driving. You can do that, but listen with a discerning ear. Ask yourself as you're listening to whatever it is you love, how, is that, how does that work? Why am I loving that? What is it about their title, their hook? What is it about those verses or that chorus or the instrumentation? What is it that's really hooking me? Ask yourself that and then begin to try to work those things into your own kind of recipes for songwriting. I, I love to cook. 
And so a lot of times I don't even use a recipe. And especially if it's something that I've cooked before, I wind up kind of having my own recipes for that. I mean, I kind of, I know the basics. I know what's, what's going to work and what's not. So then I can be creative with it. And, and I think that's really a lot of the trouble with aspiring writers is that they have never really learned the basics. So they can't be experimental. They want to chart their own course and create their own genre of music, but they don't even know the first thing about writing within a genre of music. So read more, listen more, and spend time Spend time soaking in the things that fill you up. Which leads me to number three, and that is to never write on empty. Just don't do it. I had a cartoon created the other month, and it's a, of a skeleton sitting there with a guitar and a pencil and a pad. And he sat there so long that he died and turned into a skeleton and has cobwebs. I thought it was kind of funny. And so maybe we can figure out how to post that for you guys. but. That's what happens when you write on empty. You're just going to be sitting there forever. If you're sitting there waiting for a lightning bolt of inspiration, or you're sitting there, you know, thinking that some kind of skills are going to jump on your head and, and God's going to show up and, you know, pour through you in a song. I hope that happens for you, but it just, it's just not been my experience. God meets us in our creativity, but he, yeah, anyway, enough about that, about that sermon. But writing is a blend of inspiration with intellectual input and musical skills. Get some skills. Get some musical skills. Learn about melodies and scales and intervals and keys and tempo and time signatures. Learn something. You know, YouTube has a bazillion courses and, and, and videos on there. You can learn anything you want, unfortunately, but this is a good thing to go learn. So. Get into the flow of learning and resourcing yourself. And I think you'll be surprised at how much comes back out of you. Don't ride on empty, you guys. It's like trying to drive your car uh, on empty. It just isn't built to do that. Feed your spirit. Feed your soul. Educate yourself. Study songs. And learn how to write from a constant overflow. Never, ever, ever go into a writing session, whether you're alone or with someone, without an abundance of ideas, snippets, inspiration from some melodies that you've thought of and you've put in your cell phone and all that. Never, ever, ever write on empty. Now, here's the last one, uh, number four. And I've really already been preaching this, and that is to change your mindset about your songwriting. In our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program, that is really what we're doing. We are just helping Beautiful, talented, amazing, anointed, spirit-filled songwriters change their mind and actually adopt the kind of a lifestyle and skill set that could lead them and lead you to songwriting success. I love something that Tony Wood, Tony, you can go back and look for his episode here on The Song Revolution, but Tony Wood, I quote this all the time, he said, the difference between you and me is that you wait for the inspiration to write, but I write until I feel the inspiration. And I think that's really a great quote to launch number four, changing your mindset. It's really about taking charge, not sitting around and waiting. Actively engage with God, of course, but you do that by writing down ideas all through your week. You do it by coming back again and again and again to the well to drink, not only spiritually, but through the books, through, through reading, through listening, through studying, through resourcing yourself. And I think that's probably the number one, if I can say enemy, of great Christian songwriting is people waiting on God to show up and do it. Okay, I just can't get off that today. But, you know, actively engage with God with your skills. You know, I mean, you, you could sit around and eat Cheetos all day long, but it doesn't mean you're going to write in Christ alone, okay? So word to the wise there. Let me say this. I think this is worth writing down. You're not robbing God of glory if you learn how to write great songs. In fact, I think you are giving God glory. Matthew 25, the parable of the, of the good steward or the parable of the bad steward, whether you're a glass half empty guy or not, 
It's like, come on. You know, it's about being a good steward of the gifts and the talents that God has put in our lives. You're not robbing God of glory to learn how to write. I was coaching a wonderful songwriter named Katie. Hey, Katie, if you ever listen to this, Katie was a one-on-one client that I had a couple of years ago who's gone on to do some great things. And Katie asked me straight up, she said, am I going to lose the anointing if I learn how to write? And I think that was a legit question. Didn't laugh at her, didn't think anything, you know, demeaning of her because she asked that question. I think it's a question a lot of people have because maybe you're used to what you would say is flowing in the spirit or, or, or creativity. You sit down and you just write and then you put music to it and you, you know, you call that a song. You know, well, that's not real songwriting, not in a professional sense of the word, right? And so that's, that's also not a great recipe for long-term writing. But that was a great question. And so I honored her question. I just said, absolutely not. You're going to enhance the calling on your life. And in fact, I really believe that that is the anointing because the word for anointing, the, the root word is ability. And so an anointing is an ability, whether it's something that you think you get supernaturally immediately with no work, which I've seen that happen, or not so much in songwriting, but in other areas, or you work and you gain a skill and people call you anointed. It's like there's no difference if you're getting the job done. And I always think about a Solomon's temple where they didn't call the people who wished that they could work with gold and laying stones and hanging curtains and doing all the beautiful things they did in, in, the, uh, in Solomon's temple. It, the, the Bible says over and over and over again that they hired the skilled crafts people, to be politically correct, the skilled crafts persons, sorry. And so, you know, that's, that's what you, you want to be skilled, you guys. You want to change your mindset about this. Never write on empty, all right? All right. So. My conclusion here today is that the road to being heard starts with learning your craft. Stop believing in writer's block, write from your overflow, and change your mindset. I think if you'll just begin to do those things, you'll be amazed at what God winds up doing with your life. You know, I, when I came to Jesus as a young 18-year-old guy, I the first thing I wanted to do was to write a song about Jesus and share it with the world. And I had this great big dream, and it was eight years later uh, before I ever made it to Nashville and someone paid any attention. That's a whole other story that I'm not going to tell today, but that was 40 years ago. And now 400 songs later, I'm still writing, releasing songs. I've got a new record coming out this year. I'm so excited about it. I'm writing more than ever in my life. So let me tell you, age is a lie. If you are someone that we would call chronologically in middle age or above, you can still do this, folks. That We're in a digital age. Nobody has to know what your birthday is, what year you were born, right? Nobody has to know that stuff. And so I'm still writing. I'm still releasing. I'm still just out there going for it and having the time of my life. And I want that for you guys, too. I really long for you to step into the fullness of what God's called you to be as a songwriter, but also as a human being. They go hand in hand, as we've been talking about today. It's about, it's a, it's about a, more than songs, y'all. It is about a better life. And I pray that the things that I've been sharing with you today have helped you to think more resourcefully, more expansively, to think just more about the possibilities rather than the impossibilities. Of course, God majors in the the impossible, right? So go out and write some amazing songs this week. Study to show yourself approved. Listen with a critical ear, a discerning ear. Read great things. Read the Bible, yes, but read a whole bunch of other things too. God uses a bunch of other folks. So read some other great books. Get an Audible app and download some incredibly inspiring books. And you guys, be inspired. You have all the inspiration in the world living on the inside of you, none other than Jesus Christ himself. That's why we're here on The Song Revolution. Jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and check out all that we offer there. There's a link in the show notes if you'd like to find out more about 
our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program. That's our premier eight-week online coaching experience to help you ramp up to pro-level songwriting. All right, you guys, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time on Song Revolution. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show today. I hope that you'll jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Check out all the resources there to encourage you in your own songwriting. And if you like what we're doing, why not share this episode out on your socials? You can find the link in the show notes. We'll see you next time.